everybody, today we're taking it to the south, doing a very, very classic dish called the fried chicken, and not just any kind of fried chicken, we're doing a buttermilk fried chicken that I'm deep frying in my cast iron pan. It's gonna be so delicious, and I'm gonna show you how to make it son of a southern chef style. Look at me making noise. This is a classic, classic southern dish. I love fried chicken because perfect fried chicken, as you know, has that really crisp texture on the outside, which is done by a, a coating method, which we're gonna talk about today. And then the chicken is also really tender. The way that I like to tenderize meat is like with anything else. I like to brine it. And so brining traditionally is a simple solution that you create with water, equal parts salt, equal parts sugar, that you combine together and you add your meat to that and you let it brine for like four to five hours or even overnight to get it really tender. So what I did was instead of using water, I actually used buttermilk. Since this is a buttermilk fried chicken, get it? And then I've added a little bit more spices to it. So I've got some hot sauce in there, about a half cup. I have some cayenne pepper, some oregano seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, and black pepper. And what I did was I just allowed it to sit in there for about five hours. In the last hour, I pulled it out of my fridge so that I can sit and get room temperature. It's really important that when you're frying food, that you're not frying food that's cold because what's gonna happen is you may get a perfectly crisp outside, but uh, your chicken on the inside won't be cooked all the way, or you'll overcook it and your chicken will be very dry and burnt on the outside, and you'll also get splattered with oil. Who wants to do that? So start with room temperature chicken. I like to use a combination of all-purpose flour. You know, my father, he actually used self-raising flour, or self-rising flour. And self-rising flour actually has a leavening agent inside of it, which is baking powder. And that actually helps to create a nice airy coating on the outside. So what I'm gonna do is actually pull a little bit from him, a little bit of my father's influence, and I'm gonna use a little bit of baking powder to that. So just about two teaspoons. And now, here's the secret ingredient, everybody. Cornstarch. So, cornstarch is actually used traditionally in a lot of Asian cuisines. Uh, a lot of Asians, look at me, I haven't even opened up this. So, uh, a lot of Asian cuisines uh, use cornstarch as a uh, coating for fried foods because it's lighter than flour. And so that just helps things to get really crisp. So about a half cup, right in. Let's talk about the spices. Again, I'm using everything that I already used inside the bath to add right into my flour. So I've got the paprika, a lot of paprika, really good to use. If you're using like a paprika, I, I advise to use like a smoked paprika. You can use some uh, oregano. I like to crush oregano in my hands. Any dry leaf that I'm using, whether it's thyme or basil, I always like to crush it just to release the oil. Then I've got some cayenne pepper, garlic powder, plenty of that, and some ground black pepper. So I'm just gonna add all of that. Right there, this is looking good already. We haven't even started frying the chicken, y'all. So now, take our whisk and just whisk everything together to season this generously with salt. Because what actually happens is when you fry foods, you lose a lot of salt. So you want to actually over season a little bit in the beginning because you're going to lose some down the line. Actually add a little bit, just like drops of the marinade. And now what that's going to do, it's actually going to create sort of like pebbles inside of the flour, which is going to help it to get a nice extra coating. But what I find that tends to happen is that your actual uh, coating on the outside just starts to fall off. So you have perfectly cooked meat, but then you have crust that's not sticking in that adhesive. So I find that by adding a little bit of the, the marinade, it helps to add a little bit of extra coating. So it should just start to crumble up. You'll start to see that happen right there. And if you notice that if you ever fried chicken, you'll, you'll notice that the first few pieces aren't really as great as the next, the next few, or even the last, the last couple pieces. And that's just because the flour has had time to touch all of the marinade that the chicken has gone through. So it really makes for a crisp, delicious chicken. Beautiful. So now I've got a pan of oil, not just any pan, a cast iron pan that's heated up to 360 degrees. That's perfect for frying. Now I'm going to actually dredge our chicken. This is real time. We've got eight. So really simply, using our hands, just gonna roll it around in the south. We're doing a son of a southern chef style. 
Use your hands, get dirty, just like my daddy did. And coat everything evenly. Now you want to make sure that this is a really important step. You want to make sure that right before you drop it into the oil, that you shake off any of the excess. I like to do just like that. Give a little test to the flour. Perfect. So, one way to test your flour is obviously if you want to use like a candy thermometer, 360 degrees, between 360 and 375 degrees is standard deep frying temperature. You can also just add a little bit of flour. You should start seeing it sizzle, and that's how you'll know that your pan is ready to go. And just drop that right in there. Oh. Who wouldn't want to eat this? I think I've got enough room for one more piece. You really want to make sure that you don't overcrowd your pan. And overcrowding the pan just means that the temperature of the oil goes down. And so what happens is your chicken doesn't actually crisp up. So it's really important that you don't over, over fill the pan with chicken. And let that cook. So while that continues to cook, I'm actually going to continue to dredge my chicken in my flour. Now, about halfway through the cooking process, it's been flipped on one side for about five minutes. And I'm gonna use my tongs here to just flip it over and continue cooking on that other side. Look at that deliciousness. It's not even done yet, and I'm just like drooling. Ah, look at that. So I'm gonna let that go for another about three minutes. I'm going to put it down to the side here, let it, let it rest. Right. So our fried chicken is done. It's looking golden and delicious and beautiful. Oh my god, like who can resist that? One at a time, bring these cuties out of the bath of love onto a wire rack. Oh my god, you can really see that texture. Beautiful. So now I'm going to let the oil get hot again. It's really important that you just don't add more chicken to oil right after you pull down chicken that's already cooked in it because it's actually lower. So you have to bring the temperature right back up and then we'll start adding more to the pan. So easy. My mouth is watering for some fried chicken. <laughs> So these last ones are perfectly done. Look at that. Ugh. Beautiful. That's how you cook fried chicken, y'all. Easy. A little bit of salt at the end. Beautiful, beautiful. So you've got a lovely fried chicken been done, we, we crisp it up, sat in the buttermilk, has perfectly crunchy on the outside, perfectly tender on the inside, I can't wait to try it. So our fried chicken has gone through all the stages that we needed to go through in order to become the perfect buttermilk fried chicken. So again, just to repeat what we've done, we started off in our buttermilk, one egg, hot sauce, tons of spices, salt, pepper, then we dredged it in a seasoned combination flour of all-purpose flour, baking powder, and cornstarch. We seasoned that as well. And then we deep fried it in our cast iron pan uh, to about 360 degrees on each side for about five to six minutes. So we've got perfectly fried chicken. I can't wait to try it. Let's see. Mmm. And it's really tender and juicy on the inside. Look at that. That is a lovely piece of fried chicken. For this recipe, <laughs> you can go to my website, sonofasonicchef.com, backslash recipe, backslash recipes, to find out how you can make this. So easy. Right, get on my face, guys. I need to eat. <laughs>